Development cooperation. You've probably heard this expression many times. Development cooperation happens when a group of people or organizations work together to improve the quality of life of disadvantaged people, societies and countries of our world. There are 7,000 million people on our planet. 2,800 million live on less than 2 euros a day. This is what's known as the poverty line. This is the case of Teresa, a 16-year-old girl from Peru who lives 2,800 meters above sea level in the Wayambamba community that's like a small town, 15 minutes away by car from the nearest health center, with no internet and just one phone for the whole community. At the same time, on the other side of the ocean is Lady, a 16-year-old girl who lives in Getcho, a town in the Basque country that has many services such as schools, health centers, public transport and businesses that meet the needs of the population. Teresa lives with her parents and her three smaller siblings in a little clay house with a thatched roof, without electricity nor running water. On the other hand, Larry lives with her parents and two siblings in a big flat that has electricity, central heating and running drinking water. Although both are the same age, their daily tasks and responsibilities are very different. Teresa wakes up at 6 a.m. to make breakfast for her whole family. In contrast, Lady wakes up at quarter past seven to have a shower, make her bed and have breakfast before setting off for school. Both will walk to their educational center where two completely different scenarios are waiting them. Larry would take about 50 minutes to get to school, which is a canteen, a football field, a playground, individual desks and a specialized teacher for each subject. Teresa, however, has to walk for about an hour to get to her little school, which has poor infrastructures and lacks teachers to teach all the subjects. After finishing their classes, Teresa and Larry will return home. After walking for an hour, Teresa has to harvest potatoes, carrots and onions, clean the barn and feed the guinea pigs. Around 7 p.m. she will do her homework before going to bed. Lyrie, by contrast, does her homework in the afternoon. Once a week she babysits her nephews until her aunt gets back from work. And when her school tasks permit, she will see her friends and go for a walk. When she gets home, she will chat on her computer with a friend she doesn't see on a daily basis or read fantasy novels before laying the table for dinner with her family. At around 10 p.m., she usually goes to bed. Once Friday comes around, their weekends are far from similar. When she doesn't have to sell the harvested products in the community farmer's market, Teresa either goes for a walk with her family around the city or takes part in a training workshop held by one of the associations for enterprising women. Meanwhile, Larry spends her time teaching Spanish to young people from other countries, meeting her friends and perhaps catching a film. As she does every night, Larry will dream of going to university to study translation and interpretation and travel the world, learning new things every day. Teresa will dream of completing her school training to improve the quality of life of her family and help her community develop. These are the daily lives of two young women who, though they share the same world, certainly do not enjoy the same opportunities and rights. Have you ever thought about cooperating with an organization to help the most disadvantaged people of our planet? The spirit of cooperation is something that all human beings share inside. From the time we are born, we all depend on each other to develop. We can help in our city's soup kitchens, collaborate with environmental causes, travel abroad to help in providing health care, or train others in new technologies. The key is remembering that developing and enjoying life must not be a privilege for just a few, but everyone's right. This is the reason for cooperating. As Dominique Lapierre said, what we don't give is lost. <laughs>